There's no lights in here. I know. Do you want to do it in my office? No, I'm going to do it. That's all right. All right. Greetings, beer industry people from around the world. Welcome to the beer industry video update. This is uh, the report for uh, for what? Fourth of July week. Fourth of July week. We got, you know, we did one last week, but we didn't post it. I didn't finish posting it, so wow. it's still, we're going to post both of them today. Okay. All right, so it's catch up time. We're going to take the rest of the week off and we're going to catch up on some stuff, okay, Megan? Yeah. Uh, let's see what we had this week. Uh, we know our friend Carlos Alvarez, just mm -hmm. down the street. Yeah. Uh, President Gambrinus, very wealthy man. He's made a lot of money off Corona over the last few years. Mm hmm. But you know, he lost the rights, and uh, you know, it's, it's kind of been inferred by Modelo that he kind of loaded the market a little bit yeah. before he left. Well, it turns out that's not true, and really, Modelo and Crown never really, uh, uh, they never really technically said that he loaded the market, but by what they did say, it kind of made people think that he loaded the market. Right. So Carlos sends. Carlos Fernandez, president of Modelo, a letter uh, which we <coughs> got our hands on, <laughs> as we do here at Beer Business Daily, because we have spies everywhere, uh, and uh, you know, saying that uh, you know, please refrain from saying that we loaded the market because Carlos writes, uh, you know, we uh, have been unfairly and incorrectly identified as the cause of this accumulation of inventories at the wholesaler level. And the very next day after he sent this letter, uh, Robert Sands, who's the new uh, chief of Constellation, he's Richard Sands' brother, right? Right. Or son. Uh, brother. It's his brother, his younger brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Rob said, he, quote, the East has suffered from the fact that as the transition occurred between the old importer and the new importer, some of the promotional activities that would have normally been put in place by the old importer had not in fact occurred. So therefore, when we took over the brand, the promotional activity at retail was less than it what than what it should have been. So we've been addressing that and building up our promotional activities and we feel good about how we've been doing that. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they didn't load the market but they did put in place uh, promote but what can you expect? They've been terminated. Right. So I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, why can't we all just get along, Megan? It's impossible. No, everybody has to fight. Fight, fight, <laughs> fight, you know. And, uh, but you know, I think we've probably heard the last of that. Yeah. I mean, crowd's going to get this uh, inventory pushed through on the 4th of July, hopefully, for them. And it will be a, a moot point. You know, mainly, uh, Carlos took the price up so high on Corona in the East that they just haven't been able to sell any. I yeah. Mean, Corona's, Corona's been flat in the East for you know since January and uh, apparently it's up uh, high single digits in the West they didn't give any guidance for the East because I think you know they're embarrassed to right. <laughs> no, it's not something you want to you know, throw out there right uh, you know we're kind of disorganized here at Bourbon State but we don't say it you know we don't say it on camera or anything <laughs> well you know so, yeah, so we just did uh, what do you think of the Supreme Court really huh that's, that's pretty big that's big news I huh? that's a lot of feedback from that yeah have you mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, you know, basically, as we all know, Sherman Antitrust Act has, for the past hundred years, been interpreted to mean that uh, uh, manufacturers cannot set vertical pricing. In other words, you know, a brewery can't come and say, hey, distributor, you have to sell this for this price to the retailer, and the retailer has to sell it for this certain price to the consumer. Uh, they can only give... Uh, you know, suggested retail prices. Right. And then if, uh, you know, what would happen sometimes is if the distributor didn't, didn't abide by the suggested retail price, in fact, if they went higher than that price, mm -hmm. the brewery would just reach back. Now that's, reach back was illegal because that was the same as vertical price restraints. Uh, breweries would do it anyway. Right. Yeah. Coors didn't do it so much, but Miller, good lord, uh -huh. A.B. I'm not making any accusations, but <laughs> let me just say, you know, it went on, I think. Anyway, uh, I think now, technically, reachbacks are legal. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the same time, the distributor also has to, to abide by these uh, price maintenance restraints if, uh, if the brewery, uh, you know, insists on it in a contract. 
Right. Uh, the other thing that this could cause is that the Costco case, which uh, has been sent to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, you know what? Are you yawning? Are you bored? <laughs> well, this is exciting stuff. What are you? What are you yawning over there for? You had a beer at lunch, didn't it you? Was a, it was a beer yeah, at lunch. See, you shouldn't drink at lunch. <laughs> but uh, you should have an iced tea like I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> All lies. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, Costco had this minimum markup. Uh, Washington State has a minimum markup. That's per se illegal under the old rules right. of the Sherman Act. Maybe now that's legal and. Maybe uh, <clears throat> this will cause the uh, uh, the court, the Ninth Circuit Court, to send the Costco case back to Judge Pe Peckman, and uh, you know, because it's a new landscape, new yes. new rules. Uh, but you know, lawyers have also told us that uh, it may not apply to the Costco case because when you have a, a markup for all brands, how does that promote competition? Right. So, uh, what else we have? Short week. Uh, it's only Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but Guinness, uh, there was a report out of Ireland that Guinness is on the block. Yeah, that's not true. Guinness isn't on the block. That's, you know, every three years, some drunk Irish reporter <laughs> goes out and writes that, that Guinness is on the block, you know? Yeah. Diageo's not going to sell Guinness. Diageo wants to have a beer, an inter international beer, that keeps them at the table in the beer industry. It gives them a fuller portfolio. It's premium. You know, okay, so it's not selling so well in Ireland. Uh, it's still doing well in other parts of the uh, of the world. Yeah. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. Although Diageo didn't tell me anything. Uh, that's all we had. Do you have anything from the liquor business? Yeah, I guess the big report of the week is that uh, Millennium, which is a subsidiary of Moet, Hennessy, got back the Belvedere trademark. Ah, so that's they, big. they ironed out all those um, trademark disagreements and, and they're back in business with Belvedere. Belvedere's so. a big vodka, right? Oh, yeah. I've had it before in a martini. I don't drink many martinis, but yeah. when I do, Belvedere's as good as any other Yeah, brand. it's a great brand. So I That's kind of big. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I got a uh, reader mail. Uh, June sales, Megan. I'm getting a lot of emails saying ugly, ugly, ugly. Uh -huh. We're not selling any beer in June. I know you guys sell all kinds of whiskey you know, all the time. Y'all are always up. But uh, we've had flooding in the Midwest and in Texas. We've had cool weather, one less selling day. Fourth of July is on Wednesday. Who's going to drink beer on Wednesday? I yeah. am. Well, it's going to be pouring rain here. And it's going to be pouring rain. That's, you know, I, I had written earlier in the week that it's going to be hot and dry. Mm. And it's, it's basically cold and rainy all, all over the country. I, yeah. I turned on the weather channel. It's just like rain you know, all over the place. Like, yeah. God dang it. <laughs> that, you shouldn't predict the weather. What am I, what am I trying to be a weatherman for anyway? I need to stick to the news. Man. Yeah, stick to the news. Just the facts, man. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we had this week. Uh, we're going to be announcing some of our speakers for the summit. Maybe as early as next week. I've got some things going, Megan, but uh, I haven't even told you about I'm trying to keep you in the dark. Yeah. Because that's, that's how we work around here. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have some speakers. It's, it's February 25th at Del Coronado in La Jolla or San Diego. Okay. But uh, we're going to have some speakers. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. I'm excited about this one. I, I am too. And oh, I read that there's a ghost at the Hotel Del Coronado. Yeah. Did you, have you heard of this young lady back in 1895? She's cute. There's a button, a little <laughs> tiny little waif. With a big hat, a big black hat. No wonder she threw herself off the balcony. And now her ghost roams the halls. And so if you see a young lady with a big black hat, you know, run from run her. Run from her. Yeah, just, and they also filmed some like it hot there, Marilyn Monroe. That, that, oh, yeah, that's right. Movie stars, ghosts. <laughs> it's going to oh, be. It's going to be an exciting. God, it's going to be hell on wheels. <laughs> all right, well, that's all we had. I'll uh, see you next week.